Hello everyone. Today we start with a new topic, sets, relations and functions. Now relations and functions, they are actually part of new area of mathematics called calculus. And as prerequisite of that, we need to learn topic sets. Now sets is actually more formal or more precise study of algebra. So instead of writing things haphazardly, we start writing things methodically in sets. Now it would be, this particular session would be just a small recap of, quick recap of what we have done maybe in the previous sessions. So it may be new to those who have missed basic algebra part, but if they want to start with sets, then we need to again have revision of sets. So let me define once what is set. Set is a well-defined collection of objects. Now, if I have a collection where I am writing 1, 3, 5, 7, 10. Now it is just a collection of some integers, I would say. If I observe, I realize 1, 3, 5, 7, they are odd integers. And 10 is an even integer. Now, if you want that 10, I don't need that 10 there, then you can remove. And if I remove that, I will realize that I'm left with 1, 3, 5, 7. Now, this particular set has a precise or peculiar nature. It has odd numbers in it. That 10 was not an odd integer. So if you are insisting that I am looking for some odd integers, then 10 cannot occur there. So we realize that a collection we call a well-defined when that particular condition we are implementing there. So a well-defined collection, we mean that if a set and a number is given, then we decide whether that particular number or object belongs to that particular collection, I mean set or not. Now these sets, generally what we use in mathematics, we denote them by capital letters and those members which appear there inside set, they are generally shown by the small letters. Before we go for further proceeding, we will have to learn certain symbols. Some symbols you must have used before also. First symbol what I find is belongs to because I keep saying that so and so element belongs to a set. So belongs to instead of writing in language, we use mathematical symbol for it. Then my next symbol is does not belong to. Does not belong to, we cross that epsilon by slash. Next is such that. Such that is shown by a colon. For all, we say for all x. If I have to say for all x, instead of writing actually in wording, I can use that V and cut by horizontal line. That is the notation for all. There exists, there exists so and so number which belongs to this set. If something like this statement you want to make, you can show that E but in the reverse direction. If and only if, if you recall previous sessions, you will realize we have used this notation before also, I double F. A is divisor of B, means A divides B. It is shown as A, then one vertical line and B. In some books, it is written as slash kind of thing also. Set of natural numbers, very common example. So it would be shown as capital N. Set of integers, capital I or capital Z. Then set of rational numbers, capital Q. These are the reserved notations. Set of real numbers, capital R. I mean, this you must be expecting. Set of positive real numbers, we write it as R plus at the top. Set of complex numbers, capital C. For the time being, this much set of symbols is enough for you so that we can proceed further. Then we go for how do we represent a set? Now, I have been saying that it is a collection, but mathematical notation for that. One is tabulation or we call it generally listing, listing method or some people call it roster also. In this, we list all the elements. All the elements are separated by comma and then we keep curly brackets and all the elements inside separated by comma. So if I have to write set of all prime numbers less than 10, say that is my example then instead of writing this all, I can write it as 2, 3, 5, 7. And I would write it in curly brackets, 
2, 3, 5, 7. So that would be the notation. Now if I have to get, write set of all even numbers lying between 2 and 20. Now when I say between then obviously 2 and 20 are not to be taken. So list starts with 4. So 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Now one method is that you actually show it in circle kind of thing or you write it in curly bracket 4 comma 6 like that keep writing till 18 that would be the notation. Now this is listing method you all must be realizing that this listing method is actually useful only when when number of elements is less if number of elements is more then listing method has its own limitation not everywhere you can use. So I go to next method of showing the set. It is called set builder. Popular name is set builder method. Also people call it as rule or property method in which we write curly bracket then we write x then we will write such that for which we use colon just now you have seen and then we write the px. What px means that px is the property what x has like if I say x is an even integer. So x being even integer is its property. So x colon, I will write x is an even integer, something like that. So we read it as a is a set of all those elements x which possess that property p. Now if I have a set like 1, 2, 3, 4, like listing method, if I write, one method would be this that you show actually 1, 2, 3, 4 lying somewhere. If I want to use now this property method, then I will write curly bracket x belongs to n, x less than 5. Now this is one of the ways of writing 1, 2, 3, 4. You can actually derive your own method also but make sure whatever property you write they will that property will give only 1, 2, 3, 4 as your answer. So that property will describe 1, 2, 3, 4. I have written here x less than 5 and x being natural number. By writing natural number what I made sure that I am not getting number less than 0. My next example is suppose if I have to write all those odd integers which are between 2 and 51. Then I am saying odd integers and between. So obviously they will start from 3. So 3, 5, 7, 9. Now how long I will continue my list like this. So I write 3 dots and then I last number I am writing as 49. Now you can realize that if I start actually writing those numbers separated by comma or the way I have shown right now here, it is impossible to actually list all the numbers. So our this property method actually comes to help and we write that set A is collection of all such x such that 2 less than x less than 51 and I put now additional condition that x is odd. So automatically x is odd will start giving you answers as 3, 5, 7, 9 etc. So this is how we represent a set. Now you realize one thing that in these examples or that presentation wherever I have used I have taken certain care that I have not written any element more than once. So even if you have n number of 2's or 3's or 1's, we actually write them once only. So I will write 1, 2, 3, 4. Even if 4 has appeared 5 times and 3 has appeared say 3 times, we will be writing only once. And the second care what we take is order in which numbers appear, that is not important. So understand that if you take this much care, then you should be in position to represent set easily. So when we come in the next session, we will be taking more types of sets and other things which are related to sets. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you.